time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope. Mr. William Bradford Huey, author and analyst, and Mr. Elliot Haynes of United Nations World. Our distinguished guest for this evening is His Excellency Charles Brookman, Minister from Switzerland to the United States. Mr. Brookman, many of our viewers, of course, know that you've been in the United States uh, for about 13 years, that you're one of your third or fourth among the uh, ministers to our country and point of service and that Mrs. Brugman is an American. And tonight, sir, we'd like first to discuss with you the nature of this uh, Swiss neutrality. It's rather amazing that through all the great wars uh, you've managed to remain neutral. So first of all, sir, in this current great struggle between the West and the Soviet Union, are you still trying to maintain your traditional neutrality? Indeed we do. Neutrality is a principle which of course we want to observe under all circumstances if we are not attacked. Well now, uh, about, about your, your neutrality, uh, that's also, ref you're not a member of the United Nations, are you? We, we are not a member of the United Nations for that very reason that we want to be neutral. Why is it, Mr. Brugman, that uh, you were a member of the League of Nations and are not a member of the United Nations? In the League of Nations, Switzerland uh, was accepted notwithstanding its neutrality. And the United Nations uh, doesn't, can't do that, cannot accept you with your neutral position. According to the dispositions of the United Nations uh, of today, it's, it is not uh, possible to be neutral and member of the United Nations. Mr. Brugman, uh, part of your neutrality, or rather going hand in hand with it, is a rather good defensive preparation in the country itself. You have a very fine militia, I understand. Indeed, our neutrality is an armed neutrality. We do our best, and did our best, for a very long time to be strong enough to defend our boundaries if attacked. This militia has quite a history, I understand, too, doesn't it? It has quite a, a history. It goes back for centuries in uh, different uh, uh, ways. It hasn't been exactly the same neutrality as it is now, as it has developed. But since 1880, uh, 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 1815, our neutrality has been recognized by the European powers and is therefore rooted in international law. I think uh, our first president, George Washington, made some remark about your militia, didn't he? You are uh, very kind to remember me of uh, that uh, <laughs> remark because it's a very flattering one. But I read it with uh, great pleasure and gratitude. Your first president, George Washington, wrote to Alexander Hamilton on May the 2nd, 1783, under the heading Sentiments on a Peace Establishment. We might see with admiration the freedom and independence of Switzerland, supported for centuries in the midst of powerful and jealous neighbors by means of a hardy and well-organized militia. Well, sir, now, of course, since George Washington, our countries have known uh, good relations between one another. Are there any problems existing between our nations today, sir, between the United States and Switzerland? So, I'll always uh, the normal problems of uh, trading to course, for example, of increasing uh, the exchanges, there is now a problem which, of course, uh, occupies us. That is the situation of the Swiss who come over here and who are bound to do military service if they don't want to be uh, punished by uh, a different status. Well, to take the first one sir, first, sir, about uh, the trade today, 
Is there an extensive trade between our two countries now? It's quite an extensive trade. And is it uh, is the balance favorable to you or to us? The balance is favorable to, to the United States. In other words, you buy more from, from, from us than... We buy more from the United States than, than we, we buy from Switzerland. The what do you uh, sell to us mainly? Watches, of course? Watches is a very important item, but we sell two machinery, we sell cheese, we, send, uh, we, we, we uh, sell uh, instruments, uh, certain chemicals. You'd and like to see a more liberal trade policy on our part so you could sell more to us, I suppose. We would like that. What do you buy from the United States, sir? We buy from the United States uh, all kind of machinery, uh, particularly also automobiles. Uh, we, we buy foodstuff, uh, raw materials, of uh, tobacco, now, I'm well, Mr. Ambas uh, Mr. Minister, coming to the second problem between our two countries, uh, the Americans drafting Swiss nationals, or if they don't join the American army, punishing them. Uh, isn't that the McCarran Act that did that, that uh, set those conditions? That's uh, indirectly the McCarran Act, which puts them in, a, in a, a, an inferior position mm -hmm. compared with the position they had before. And that devoided of a, a treaty that was a hundred years old between the, the two countries. The treaty is a uh, hundred years old, a hundred three years old. Well, sir, uh, the problems of Western Europe, uh, for instance, the refugee problem uh, that came after the Second War, uh, was Switzerland affected by the refugee problem? Has, has your country been overrun by refugees as many other countries have in Western Europe? We had during the war very many uh, refugees we accepted them, but we couldn't keep them. They couldn't settle in Switzerland. So that they were allowed to stay there until they had found uh, other places of, for, for their uh, work and for, uh, to stay definitely. It's very difficult for one of them to become a citizen of Switzerland, isn't it? It is uh, rather difficult. It takes uh, about 11 years to become a Swiss citizen. And the uh, community in Switzerland itself is responsible for admitting uh, citizens or rejecting them. Indeed, the community has to consent, the canton, means the state, has to consent, and uh, the, the federal government uh, have to consent. Well now, of course, there's been the rather, rather harsh criticism. Uh, it's probably unjustified, but rather harsh indeed, that Switzerland uh, simply sat on the fence and, uh, and grows rich while the rest of us fight the wars. Now, uh, has, is, has Swiss economy profited uh, from the Second World War, for instance? It hasn't profited. The, the, the Switzerland had to contribute to, uh, to the other European countries uh, almost in the same degree as your people have done by the Marshall Plan. And whilst economy, economy is good, uh, of course the prices have <laughs> gone up and as a whole one, one cannot say that Switzerland has been profited. Have you suffered from inflation in Switzerland? We have suffered uh, <coughs> somewhat by inflation, but uh, not very much. And you, you still have the soundest money in Europe, I believe. We have uh, good money, it's certainly among the best uh, currencies. One of the uh, good aspects of Switzerland is your labor peace, isn't it? Don't you have very few strikes? Since the beginning of the uh, Second World War, we had no uh, strikes of any importance. Well, sir, uh, throughout most of the world in the last 40 years, there has been <coughs> a steady decline in individual liberty. And of course, you Swiss have a, a reputation for being self-reliant and liberty-loving. Now, has there been some loss of personal liberty in Switzerland over the last few years, sir? Of course, we have many more laws than uh, formerly, and we have particularly much higher taxes than before. But as a whole, I don't think that the personal liberties had, have uh, suffered uh, considerably. Has there been a, a, a rise in uh, socialistic activities on the part of the government? Has the, does the government extend more and more benefits to its individual citizens? Yes, it's, uh, it's a, a better distribution of, of duties. For example, people in the military service get uh, a better pays. 
and uh, the people who don't do military service have to contribute to that. But the people in general in Switzerland are so satisfied that you have a very small communist uh, population, don't you? We have a very small and insignificant uh, communist party in Switzerland. Mr. Brugman, I'd like to interject one question here. I made a mistake and called you ambassador a minute ago. You are your country's first representative. Why is it that uh, 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 Switzerland has no ambassadors? That's just the Swiss custom to have only ministers. It's a form yes. of uh, modesty, you might say? It is certainly kind of modesty and, and uh, just the opinion that a small country like Switzerland should represent in foreign countries on a modest level. Well, Mr. Brugman, as a final question, sir, Switzerland was fortunate enough to remain free during the great totalitarian sweep across Europe that began in 1941. Now, if there is a second great totalitarian sweep across Western Europe, do you think you also will be able to maintain your freedom what the question? Why do you think of such a possibility? We hope it will not come. But of course, we have to be prepared for, for, for any, any eventuality, not only by our army, by our uh, equipment, but particularly by our mentality. I think the strongest uh, weapon for a small country like Switzerland is the love for freedom and independence. Well, thank you very much for being with us this evening, sir. The opinions you've heard our speakers express tonight have been entirely their own. The editorial board for this edition of the Longine Chronoscope was Mr. William Bradford Huey and Mr. Elliot Haynes. Our distinguished guest was His Excellency Charles Brookman, Minister from Switzerland to the United States. North, South, East or West, no other name on a watch means so much as Longines, the world's most honored watch. Now actually, Longines watches are sold in all the capitals of the free world for the appreciation of things fine and beautiful is universal. And in all these countries, millions of discriminating men and women own and cherish a Longines, the world's most honored watch. And it's significant that among the finest watches in the world, only Longines watches have won 10 World's Fair grand prizes and 28 gold medals. And so many prizes, bulletins, and citations from leading government observatories. Now at this season of gifts, these are important facts to remember. For a birthday or anniversary, an important present to a graduate, as a gift to bride or groom, no other name on a watch means so much as Longines. And yet do you know that you may buy and own or proudly give a Longines watch for as little as $71.50. Longines, the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. This is Frank Knight, reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches. Crime Syndicate is exposed on the CBS television network.